Hi guys, Paul and Thomas here. Hello. And what are we going to be doing today? Today we'll be discussing the Helix and my setup for the Helix. So before we run through the setup, one of the common questions uh, we actually get in our YouTube channel is, um, who is this 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 quad for? Uh, as in, who is it suited to? Is it a Nacra quad? Is it a race quad? Where, where does it sit? Because you, you seem to be using it for both at the moment. Uh, yes, and I think, to be honest, I see it as both a racer and a Nacra quad uh, because... It is very fast, it's very agile, it's got good low-end control, good high-end control. So, for me, it fits both roles. Uh, I guess if you had to kind of put it in a class for a certain person, I'd say it generally supports people that can fly at higher tilts, because this is more of a racer where you, it is more designed to be using that top-end throttle. So I would say if, uh, you do more of the kind of blippy acro, where it's kind of just like quick shot punch, a bunch of flips and rolls. I mean... The Helix, you might not really be able to use its full potential in that kind of sense, but you can do, you can fit all the roles. It's really aerodynamic, so it can pretty it's, much do anything. It's it, more preference. It's a different sort of flying style, isn't it? And that that's all it is, really. Well, it can be. I mean, well, if you want it to. I mean, realistically, you're right. I mean, like you can you can run. It come, the kit comes with a thirty degree tilt. Is it? I can't remember whether it's thirty. Thirty degree, degree forty five, and sixty. And sixty degrees. So you've got those tilts. So you can actually run those tilts. Um, and the aircraft has actually got less drag too, so it does seem to perform well in all those areas, doesn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, there's really, at least comparing it to the Alien, uh, at least from what I've found, there is really nowhere this is worse, except maybe for the fact that you can't get the tilt exactly how you want it. For me, I like 45 degrees, so it fits me perfectly. Um, I know some people prefer like 35 or something like that. Built more for racing, but then with the way they've designed the GoPro mount, it does suit a GoPro very, very nicely. So what about, actually speaking of GoPro, I will have a link in the description for our GoPro Hero 3 and 4 cases. We're actually working on a um, one for the session at the moment, but that's not really ready to go again. We've still got to do some more development work on that. But anyway, um, I will have a link for those in the description. Now what about the air, airframe's footprint itself? Um, well that's one of the really killer points for this thing. Because of the way they've uh, tried to integrate everything, it has a really, really small footprint. And so that means you get less drag, so more efficiency, more speed, and then also, just in general, it puts less stress in the actual gear that you're running. So what about the motors that you've been actually running? It's worth mentioning that you were, um, Impulse actually involved you in the development of this quad. You got your first one in May last year, May 2016. Um, you started with originally with Cobras on it, wasn't it? Yes, and with Cobras, just like kind of in its basic setup with Little B Pros, it was already outperforming my current best racer, so, which yes. is running F4s. And, and the reason we ran the Cobras, because we had some uh, benchmark uh, testing that we'd done with the Cobras, and we knew how fast they were, and that's why we were. These are the old Cobras, the ones that um, Chad didn't like, isn't it? Yeah. So anyway, this is our, our final glide. So what motors are you, have you gone as far as progression from there? Um, so from that, I've gone through to the F42s, uh, from prototypes to production to other prototypes, so kind of, my quads are right now between prototypes, production motors, and all lot, sorts of other stuff. You've so. mainly been running team motors, and it's mainly been the... Well, yeah, they've F all been F40s. All F40 class. Just of some different F40s. And are you using those for acro and racing? Acro and racing, uh... For my style, it fits perfectly. I love the way the team motors run. I mean, there's no slop in the bearings, heaps of power, and they are also very efficient. Okay, and another key area on this is the ESC fairings that they've got. Uh, what are your thoughts on those? Uh, they are really nice in the sense that they do protect your ESCs. Obviously, they also um, help with drag because now your ESCs are kind of out of the, I guess, airflow, airflow when you're kind of at a racing angle, I guess. Uh, but I do like also how they protect the ESCs uh, from crashes and stuff like that. Uh, having other quads even hit you from behind. Uh, so, look, well, what always happens is the fairings take the hit and the ESCs stay safe. That's right. Now, as far as ESC covers, you'll notice that we're using different ESC covers to what uh, Impulse have developed. Uh, keep in mind that when Thomas started flying the Helix, the Helix was first unveiled at the Australian Nationals, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, that's where it won the actual um, the finals, didn't it? Yeah, it was. So um, it's worth mentioning that around that time, they didn't have production fairings. So we've been using 3D printed ones and we've sort of modified those to suit our needs. The file for that is also available on Thingiverse and we've actually ran with those. We haven't changed only because we're, I suppose, lazy, isn't it? Uh, lazy and also we do a lot of testing. So, so it's, it suits what we're actually doing. So if you're ripping quads apart all the time, um, 
Uh, that's really the main reason why we've stuck with these. So uh, keep in mind, definitely have a look at the Impulse ones because they are a lot nicer to finish, aren't they? They are a lot nicer to finish, yeah. Okay, so as far as ESCs, can you run through what ESCs you started with all the way through to what you're actually using or trialing now? Okay, so I started with the Little B Pros, so they just use normal BR Hully, and they were very good starting ESCs, especially going to a frame of this configuration where it does take a lot of the load off the ESCs, so it meant I could go a lot faster. Uh, then I moved shortly after the Nationals to the Icon 30 amps, the ones rated uh, for 6S, and they were a massive leap up from the Little Bs, and the quad just became more locked in, had more power, it was amazing. And they were running BR Hully S. BR Hully S. Yep. And, and what you, then you gone? I just moved to the F30s, and I've got to say those have been the best that I've got. With D-Shot 600, not 150, 600, they are amazing. It's the most locked in the quads been. I've got way more top-end control, still got low-end control, and I think the motors might have a little more power, hard to say. Could just be more of a Ooh. control thing that it just feels more powerful, but... um. I think it might be a little quicker. I suppose if you're locked in more, that would actually make sense that you would actually have more power, which means uh, you're not actually wasting energy. I guess it's more usable power yeah. that you can actually take advantage of and use in a race. And what about the integration on the Helix itself? So that's one of the big strong features for me. Obviously, the frame's designed so everything fits in a certain spot because there is limited space on a design like this. But then also the fact they've created the flight controller, PDB, OSD, and VTX to all work together on this frame, it makes this a killer build. Uh, I know some people really like the whole tinkering with different hardware and stuff like that. For me, I oh, want a system that works and works really, really well. And so this has been by far the most bulletproof system I've ever had. Well, without a doubt, I mean, it's, it's always worked. Every one you've built, they just work, isn't it? That, that's yeah. really the key feature. And another thing too is because of the integration, you do get really good build repeatability. So, I mean, with my Helixes, you could get my three races, which are all set up identically, and I couldn't tell the difference between them. Yeah, if, you, if we've actually done a test where he's actually blown, um, didn't know which one I was firing up, and we've actually flown him, and he hasn't been able to tell the difference. The only time you could tell the difference was when you had two different cameras and two different brand cameras, and the actual uh, um, angle was slightly different, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but that was just that, a camera thing. That was Once I got the same set of cameras, then it, it, you couldn't tell. You couldn't tell the difference when you were actually flying, which, which is a, a big plus, especially if you're racing, um, etc., and you have a crash and you damage your quad, you can grab another one knowing that you're flying exactly the same thing too. So that's another thing to take into consideration. The VTX, very clean power, isn't it? Yeah, and there's no issues with lines in the video. The video link is solid, and the output also on the VTXs is crazy accurate. Especially, look, I think when you're running the higher outputs, when you're running 200 milliwatts, 400 milliwatts, it's not such a big issue if the power output is slightly out. I don't think it causes much of an issue. But um, in on 25 milliwatts, it's really crucial that you're close to that 25 milliwatts. And this is probably the only VTX that we've actually tried that I've tested the power output on, that it's virtually smack bang on 25, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. So that's really impressive. I recently got a power output tester. This is one of the immersion ones, and I've been testing all the VTXs we got. And this is the only one that we actually have on hand that actually outputs 25 on 25, you know what I mean? Whereas you've got some output in 30 and some output in 15 or 10. And so another thing too, OSD switching for the channels, power output, and uh, frequency is amazing. I didn't think I'd like it at first. Through the now, OSD, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think I could go back. Yeah, it, it's really convenient. So that's another plus with this uh, with this aircraft. Now, as far as the RX antennas, it's awesome that it's actually got a place, isn't it? It is. Um, it's just nice knowing that that's where they locate. You kind of know how everything's meant to go together, and it just all and assembles it's, so cleanly. It's a little thing, and it's away from the carbon, which gives you good RX reception. It's a, it's a, it's a really well-thought-out design, isn't it? It is. Now, as far as the setup, um, it's pretty painless, isn't it? It is, yeah. With a clean build at the end, isn't it? Uh, with the clean build, I mean, for a start, the building itself is actually pretty straightforward, which is nice. And then also the actual setup for like the VTX, uh, if you're flashing that to the international hex and stuff like that, um, that's all really easy, really straightforward. And the, de the default PIDs that are ready for the Impulse FC right now, they seem to be really, really good. They're really, really close. And we'll actually put the PIDs that Thomas is actually running on his uh, setups in the description below. So keep in mind, it's going to depend on what motors you run, what ESCs you run. All those things will actually have a bearing. And also what props you, you, you do run. But um, keep that in mind. 
but we will have that in the description of this video. Mm. Well, we've only had one prototype uh, quad that the default PIDs were a little too high for, but I mean, that was just a slight tune down of the P's and then that was perfect. And it's worth mentioning that the original prototype that you received back in May is still functioning now, isn't it? Functioning solidly. And as far as the strength of the actual frame itself, uh, you've broken one arm, haven't you? I've uh, broken one arm that was with the GoPro one, full throttle into a tree in a massive straight. He just clipped the actual uh, trunk of the tree and it looked like everything exploded. We were horrified, weren't we? Oh, the motor was gone too. The motor was gone, um, but that was the only time he's actually broken an arm. And considering how fast you actually fly, um, that's pretty impressive. And the FC dampening, that works really well, doesn't it? That does work really well. I guess that comes into the whole integration thing again. The, having that FC dampening that is built for the quad is just perfect i mean it locates properly um i haven't had any issues with that at all okay so what about the flight characteristics of this air aircraft um your thoughts in the way it actually handles etc to me it handles pretty much better in every way from whatever i've flown uh low end high end uh fast corners small corners sharp corners wide corners like i guess because we are just flying in three-dimensional space and you really only got air for wind resistance um the quad, because of the low footprint, just handles really well through anything. Um, there is more power, obviously, because of the better aerodynamics, uh, so you do have to watch out for that. You can quite often end up a little higher than what you would like or something like that if you put the throttle on a little too much and you haven't leaned over. But, I mean, they're just things you adapt to because I mean, this is a faster frame. It's a faster frame, no two ways. And the thing you brought about the wind is actually interesting because on really strong windy days there have been days that we have had trouble flying and the reason we've had trouble flying with this frame on a windy day was because we were actually physically getting blown over wasn't it where you yeah, actually lose the quad itself doesn't <laughs> get affected as much by wind which is a big thing i noticed we, we, to the alien. we stand up when we fly so we're both standing and it was actually felt uncomfortable because we were the ones getting blown over we were losing balance the quad itself was still locked in wasn't it yeah perfectly locked in i guess that's because of that less drag that there's obviously less footprint to get knocked around by the wind which I think makes a massive difference to be honest. So one of the questions we actually get is how fast is the Helix? Is it the fastest frame? Is it the lightest frame? Like that's pretty easy to answer in the sense that it's no it's not the lightest frame and it's no it's not the fastest frame. It is but, up there. But it's hell it's up there you know what I mean and did you want to elaborate on that? Yeah so we have actually in our house one quad that is without a doubt faster than this thing in a straight line but that quad cannot turn anywhere near as well as what the helix can and i mean i guess it comes down to aerodynamic efficiencies and that kind of thing where while you might have a quad that can go faster or maybe a quad that is lighter uh on a track you might actually find very different results in practice where i guess it's kind of you might have all this speed or not that much weight but how much of the quad is actually controllable at high speed and it's worth mentioning too the faster quad you're talking about that we designed that would literally explode if it hit anything, something, hit something, isn't it? It would. Literally, it would explode <laughs> into a million pieces. pieces. So that's where I mean, like it ticks, the, the Helix actually ticks a lot of boxes. Um, and as far as speed goes, I mean, look, you were able to prove that it is actually a quick quad. You were able to do the UTT 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, yeah, and the Helix did it fine. I mean, any issues I would have had uh, breaking the records were purely my own mental barriers that I had to overcome. But the Helix itself didn't really have to so the limiting factor was more your abilities rather than the actual frame itself isn't it yeah so that's another key thing to keep in mind too and when were those those, those were back in november wasn't it those were in november so and we're probably not going to visit those for a while now because now we've got the racing season going to kick off here in um in australia so our focus is going to be more um geared towards the racing itself but um, that sort of gives you an idea that it is a fast frame. Obviously, you've, you've got to be able to... I mean, you're saying at the moment, even at your skill level, you can't get the full potential out of this frame. No, there's still heaps to get out of it. <laughs> so keep that in mind. But as far as a good frame goes, yes, it's a good high-performance frame. It's, it's an insane really, performance frame. It's really light. It builds really well. It just ticks so many boxes. I think if you sort of listed um, what this frame was actually good at, from building to construction to design to speed to performance, I don't think... I can't think of any frame that would actually come close. Not really, um, especially with the integration too, which I guess is what's allowed this to become such a successful frame, is that they have been able to really kind of mould it into what uh, Impulse wanted it to be. Well, and so it is a really robust frame as far as it works. Um, 
everything's pretty bulletproof with this thing. And I mean, as far as for racing, that's what you want. You want it to be repeatable. You want it to be consistent. And that's exactly what it is. I mean, the fact that your original prototype is still functional and it's still one hell of an amazing quad, that says something. It does. So, uh, you know, it's, it's still going and going strong. So um, the frame itself, I think, has been proven. There's lots of reviews out there, so it's worthwhile having a look at other people's opinions. Yeah, to see what they think. Frame. Obviously, people also, they want different things from their frame, so it's worth actually having a look to make sure that this is for you. But So that's basic a rundown on what it is that Thomas has been racing uh, the last half of this year, is it? Uh, yes. Yeah, last year, so the last half of... Um, I can, 2016, sorry. Yes, yeah, since May 28th. <laughs> since May 28th, but you weren't actually racing it in May 28th. So, uh, no. And thank you very much to Impulse for actually trusting us with their, their baby. Um, we're very, very happy to be flying this beast, aren't we? Yes, we are. So anyway, look, I hope you got some information out of this, um, some worthwhile information, our insight into the Helix itself. Have a look down in the description. I will have more details there. And anything I've forgotten to actually cover, I will cover in there. If you've got any specific questions, please comment down below and Thomas and myself will do our best to actually answer any questions you have. Yeah, we might even do a follow-up video maybe in the future of just yep. going into more detail about certain things because with the Helix, there is a lot to cover. If there's something specific you want us to actually cover, we're happy to do a, a video covering uh, specifics on it itself. Uh, but that sort of gives you a rundown on, on what it is that we've actually been using. Anyway, look, I'll leave the video with that. Thanks very much for taking time to watch this video and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.